Okay, today on Captain Chaos's laboratory, we're going to be working on Frankenstein's laboratory. Um, this one actually fully functions. The reason we're going to work on it is uh, several people out there, I've actually had a couple of requests, um, have this piece. Mine, this is from my display, so it's got a lot of uh, dust and dog hair. Um, on how to take this apart and fix it, because apparently he, well, technically he doesn't do anything. The motor is doing all the work behind it. Uh, Frankie doesn't come up and down and do his little uh, get electrocuted thing. So we're going to figure out how to open this, fix it, find the common failures, which is usually going to be a motor or a broken gear, possibly a bad belt. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that this belt is the actual drive belt. I don't know. There's one way to tell. Let's, uh, let's take this belt off and see if it still goes up. So now the belt's off. So no, that belt's just for looks. It's just to spin this wheel here. So that'd be nice if it was external. You wouldn't have to open it to change your belt. But hey, it is what it is. Now wait till it stops. There we go. So let's figure out how to open this thing up. I'm gonna turn it off. If you're looking at it going, what's that nasty stuff? Is when I have this on my display, that's the sticky tack. I have my display in cubes. So I have the sticky tack holding these off to the side because I have them sitting in the on position with no volume. But if somebody wants to hear what a specific one sounds like, this is accessible on the side of the cube, stuck in place, and you can turn it on uh, all the way to hear the soundtrack. So let's uh, let's look at this. So the most common problem is. He doesn't move, and of course, Frankie doesn't go up and down. Uh, not sure. This spins, but then stops, and spins, and then stops. So maybe mine does have a problem. Or maybe it's just smacking something inside. I think it's supposed to freewheel, and it's just smacking the... Yeah, it's just smacking the, the window frame. Right there. I got uh, one of these right here is taller than the rest, so... Looking inside through the window, there is nothing attached to it, so this should just freewheel. That'd be kind of cool if it spun when he spun. Uh, maybe it's supposed to and mine is broke, but I don't see anything inside. So, like all, most every single Emacs out there, um, the only access is going to be from the bottom. You can see there's nothing on the back that you can access, and uh, I wouldn't try and separate the resin top pieces, because like this piece is separate from this piece here. Uh, it's just going to cause a heck of a problem. First thing to do is uh, remove the power port plug so we can flip it. Uh, like most Max, if you didn't know, it's four and a half volts. Um, it's pretty standard. Uh, okay. Fire up my heat gun so we can. Loosen up some of this. So this is from 2007, according to the bottom here. Uh, these older ones on the ceramic, they... Is there a light there? Yeah, that's what I'm getting caught on. Um, they would stamp it into the base uh, of the ceramic. It says Limax copyright, or Limax registered 2007 copyright. So 
but all these older ones that were ceramic or porcelain, they had it stamped in the bottom. So like always, this is the longest part. That's why sometimes I do this before I start filming. It's because removing the pad is the most annoying part of this process. I'm trying to salvage it, but if I can't, I'll replace it. But while I'm doing this, uh, I guess we could talk about something else. Uh, another light. The reason the lights sometimes are a pain for this is the uh, glue that holds the light in place adheres to the mat stronger than the mat's actual glue that holds it to the porcelain. Anyhow, the... I don't know if any of you out there are coffee or tea drinkers, but uh, finally we got an affiliate with a coffee company. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy from Coffee Brand Coffee. Uh, using the link below. And if you want to get a discount on your order, use the discount code RJC. It's just the initials for Random Junk Channel. Because using the whole name, it's just too long. But they have uh, several varieties of coffee, teas, and cocoa. I don't drink too much coffee anymore. I used to. But I have a, a heart condition that I got many years ago and found out that uh, coffee, even in decaf, for some reason, uh, affects it. So I drink tea. Um, I usually buy it by the case. I drink a lot of tea. And uh, every once in a while I drink hot cocoa. Well, cold cocoa. I don't drink anything hot. So if I brew tea or I brew coffee when I used to, or if I brew, uh, cook up or make a batch of cocoa, I always chill it. Uh, I don't do the hot stuff. But if you're interested, they have uh, over 4,000 five star reviews. I've been buying from them for well, shortly after they started as a company. Um, so, not trying to shill, it's just shilling a little bit. They, uh, uh, matter of fact, the most recent thing I bought from them was a uh, whole bean grinder. Uh, just because we have whole bean and there's other people that drink coffee besides myself. And uh, I bought the cocoa. Which I haven't had in the past couple of months because it's um, a little hot. I did buy it. I haven't had any from the new batch yet because I you know, live in Arizona. Cocoa is not high on my priority right now, but the tea, you brew it, and then you just, uh, you know, basically you're making iced tea. You brew it, you chill it, you add some ice cubes. I throw it in my uh, jug I take to work with me. Add a little lemon or lime. I don't know if you've ever done that, but adding lime to your tea, <laughs> to me it tastes better than the lemon. But anyway. The links below in the description, it's below most all the videos, has been for a long time. Just never been doing anything to promote it. But it helps support the channel. Uh, many of you know that I do all this and I don't, I don't charge to do any of this. I don't uh, tell you to subscribe. It's always written at the bottom, but we don't really shill the channel. This wasn't... Uh, it wasn't a job that we were going to do to retire off of, and that's if you're new here, when I say we, there's two of us. Um, I, don't, I do most of the repairs on this, and the other guy does the tasting, taste testing stuff, and the drinking, and um, he's the editor. So, whew, all right, so here's the bottom. Probably be easier if you start from the back, now that I've done this. The access points against the back. We do have a single screw in here, which is holding something. Because uh, I'm looking through the window. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to put my flashlight. Now, 
magnetic flashlight. Uh, get off. I don't know if you can see in there, there's a circuit board and there's the speaker. So the screw is probably holding in some of this mechanism. It's all off to the side. The machine will turn off in a second, so sorry about the noise. Now we're going to pop the bottom off. Luckily, the um, uh, what should I call it? The glue has softened up. Bear with me for a second. I'm getting a phone call from the editor. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. I am sorry about that. Uh, we're getting stuff made for a future upcoming video, and uh, the process got jacked up. So it wasn't really an editing issue. It was more of a getting materials for the one of the upcoming videos issue. So anyway, what all I did was I just removed the thing completely and cleaned up some of the glue that was stuck to it uh, while on the phone. So I didn't go any further. So the bottom is still attached. Uh, so there's nothing, no hidden things I've been doing while I was away for a couple of minutes. Now I'm just going to pry out some of this glue so we can get this bottom out. Main reason that came off is because when I was talking, I put my hand on it, and of course, I'm like, oh, great. So. There we go. All right. So now we have the base out. So attached to the base, besides the glue is the speaker and the, well, it almost looks like a fireplace, but it's not, it's a little shelf counter thing. Uh, I'm going to unplug the speaker and move this base out of the way. I'm gonna try and unplug the speaker. The speaker physically plugs in. It's got a little plug. I just can't get my finger in there. So it's got a little Molex plug, so we're going to get that out of there. That way you can see up inside. So that white pin, or white cap, it's got two pins in it. That's the speaker. And here's the entire mechanism. It's right there. So there's your motor, there's your gears. There's some wires that run it, of course. You know, um, You got wires top and bottom. You have two wires to the motor. There is a micro switch right here. There's going to be one on the top too. That tells the motor to turn off so it doesn't keep turning and break everything. Uh, if you're having a problem with that, you're going to have to replace your micro switch. Or you have a bad circuit board, can't read the micro switches. So, next step is to try and get this out to get to the motor. This is uh, where my finger is high. Um, this, like a few other pieces, has this weird wooden thing across brick. There's a screw under there. A very common Lemax thing. Also, we've got some screws here and here. And I'm sure those screws are to access probably the gears up here. So why don't we just take it all apart and see what's behind these little access doors. So let's start with the screws I don't have to break the glue off of. screwdriver. <clears throat> <Two. clears throat> Three. I don't know if these will actually come out because it looks like there's still resin around them.
These plastic inserts are glued down. This one broke free. What was that cracking sound you heard? It was the, the glue is separated. You might be able to see the movement. This one's got a really thick bead of glue. I don't think that's necessary unless something in here is broke. So let's see if I can get this uh, plastic panel to come off, which it should. The glue is yellowed, so with the yellow glue they usually don't stick anymore. And behind that is a screw. And, oh look, they didn't even get uh, glue in the screw. A lot of times you can pop these off, there's glue in the screw and you can't unscrew it. So, there we go. There's that. No other hidden panels on the back. No. I see screws on the front too. Uh, right now his cage is covering screws that go through this plastic backer. <sighs> I wonder. Let's get him up to the top so I can see better. sound because there's no speaker. Okay. So you might be able to see the screw right there. Right here. That dot. That screw, it actually, if you can take that screw out, you might actually be able to access the mechanism without trying to remove the whole thing. The easiest way to access that screw is to pop out the window. Uh, again, because of the age of this piece, you're not going to have a lot of adhesion on the glue. The glue is just brittle. Screw. the piece the cracking you heard was there's a little bit of glue right here it's up on that side it's up on the top nothing stuck here uh, and there was a little bit right here on this corner so this corner had a little bit of glue and then this edge from about my finger to the corner here so half inch and a dollop of glue just to hold it square and now we can see the motors uh, drive system and how do we get the rest out? How are you held in place? Mm -hmm. Might actually have to pop this off. There might be something back here holding it truthfully. just this uh, roof plate. Uh, no, that's not moving. Let's heat this piece up and see about getting this off. Normally I'd use a spudger for this, but because these pieces are so much smaller, I'm using a small blade screwdriver to dig into it. I use anything I can that will work based on what I'm working on. So this is too fat and too thick to dig into this fine glue and these fine gaps whereas an electronic screwdriver has a very small point. So Now this glue is yellow to probably break off, but I don't want to break the plastic. 
So I'm going to try and heat it up and get some movement on it. There we go. I'm going to be truthful, this is one I never wanted to take apart because I like the fact it's a Frankenstein style and Frankenstein, the old school monsters are my favorite and I never wanted to disassemble this unless it broke um, just because that's the genre of scary movies or horror movies I like the originals back when, I don't know, they seem to be better But that's just my opinion. And I'm an expert in my opinion. <laughs> so. some stiff glue. Alright, broke it free and I slid out the hands. The hands are cupped so that way the, the crank goes through. Now the entire thing is broke free. And I believe it probably has to come out the top. No, nope, it can't. So how do we get this thing out now? So now that that's broke free, let's see if we can get this to separate. Definitely need to get this back off because this should drop down inside. But I need to get this plastic off. But this plastic is one big piece. It goes way down inside. Um, I think the whole thing is the plastic. So maybe I do have to get the roof plate off. And now that I have some freedom, let's, uh, let's see. Can I? Yeah, I can fit a screwdriver and get it out of its tabs now. Now that I have some movement. So I got that tab out. Here's the rough plate, and these are the two tabs I'm talking about right there. You can see them. I couldn't get it when it was in there because it kept smacking the inside of the porcelain. So 
So once this is, I mean, you might be able to, if you flex it down, you might be able to. I, I was going to flex it down, but it's got gussets, which help reduce the chance of flexing the right there. But now that that's out of the way, there's a lot more movement. And now we can see about trying to get to the mechanism. That's the biggest issue. Is how do we get to this mechanism? It won't fit through the bottom because it's got this. I'm assuming this is screwed in from behind here. So basically, if you have this thing and it's broke, um, it's going to be a little bit higher than normal level to get it to come apart. So the whole top piece is attached to this. So you're going to have to separate the lightning bolt. And yes, there is a screw, it looks like. Uh, it's hard to tell. I gotta get the rest of this plastic housing off. There we go. Just gotta break all the glue. Since this is plastic, if you use a heat gun, be careful that you don't melt the plastic. Preventing this from coming out is technically the wiring. I don't know if the wiring unplugs or not. It looks like it does actually. Just can't get my fingers in there again. That's that screw on the bottom. So there's this big fat plug, big fat Molex plug. That's all the wiring that goes to this center section. So now we can pull it out the top. Be careful with these wires. They're 16 years old at the time I'm filming this, so if you watch this in a couple years, it'll be older. And you're going to, um, they'll be a little bit more brittle. So here's our mechanism. So, what I was breaking free on the inside when I took the one screw out, which goes right there, was some of this glue. You can see there's a lot of this glue, which some of it was touching back here. You can, nah, you can't because of the angle. You can see a little bit, jeez, you can see a little bit of the residue right in there. Um, as far as uh, taking the back of this apart, you technically don't have to now, now that we know how this actually comes out. So I'm going to try and push this back together. It's got little alignment pins that snap into place and they have it glued. I don't know if I'll have to re-glue it just for the fact that um, once I snap it in and put those screws back in. But the reason the screws are in there is, see all the screws, is the mechanism that does the handle and does this pulley. So it's the gears that go all the way up. As you can see, there's a ton of them. There is, geez, several. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve. This thing has close to 14, 15 gears. 
but this is how you take it apart. Now on this, what's going to fail the most common is going to be this motor. Luckily, the way the mine is greased, it doesn't have a whole bunch. But um, if you store this thing upside down in this box like that, the, the grease will run down the front. If you store it straight up, the grease will run down the inside. And if you store it on its back, the grease will just come out the bottom. So this motor is less likely to fill with grease like a lot of the other ones. And I do notice my belt's getting a little weak. You can see the slack that forms. See it? So while I have it open, I might as well replace this belt since this belt is older than dirt. Well, 16 years. My gears are all good. I know that from its motion. But uh, to check them, before you disassemble all the screws, just turn the big pulley and then look at each gear. Now some gears don't turn very fast. You're going to have to turn this thing dozens of times. Uh, another thing you can do if you trust yourself not to get your fingers in the way is keep this plugged into the board, powered on, and the mechanism will do it for you. Um, I like doing it this way just because that way I can feel. If you have a broken tooth or a cracked gear, you're going to feel the hitch in your finger. The motor might overpower it and you may have a clicking sound or it may not do anything and it may just pass right through it. But by doing this, you can feel the gears. Meaning that if there's a problem, you're going to feel it. And then you can uh, address it at that point. Now, what's most likely to break on this is there is a 10-tooth gear right here at the bottom of this pulley. And then see the other gear right there, the small guy? It's a 14-tooth. The 10-tooth is the first one that usually breaks on these. The 14-tooth is the second one. Um, and it's just the way they're made. The torque that's put on them, you know, these bigger gears transfer from a little step to a bigger ring or a bigger step. Less likely to snap. But that 10 tooth, very common right there. And that 14 tooth is the second most common. So if you're getting a click or a crack or if this is going up and it's slipping where it, you can hear the motor spinning but nothing's working, either your belt's gone bad or you have a broken gear and it's slipping on the shaft. Um, the only one that will do that is that 10 tooth. The rest of these gears spin freely on the shaft that 10 tooth is pressed on. So if it's slipping, 10 tooth. If it's clicking, one of the other dozen gears that are in here. But to take it apart, uh, you do have to remove all these screws and could you have to break this window out with the glue right in here to get to that hidden screw right there and then take out screw 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 you'll probably have to uh, end screw so you just break off some of the glue sink it to the screw head like so and then you just pull this whole plate off so the only thing holding this piece on is the glue right here on the edge you have to separate this roof top kind of like I had to separate this one here and then the edge of this window frame or the whole frame itself now because this spins freely you got to be careful that you don't lose it when you pull it all apart. Hopefully, you'll never have to. Um, the only thing you should ever have to replace is this motor. Now the motor, when you do replace it, you can either, uh, without tearing it all apart, you can try to unscrew the screws and then cut the wires and splice it right here in the bottom, or pull it out, unglue the wires, and reconnect it directly to these two wires, which is your motor wires. Depending on your motor. Now, some motors come with these long wig, whip, ta uh, whip tails pigtails or whips, geez, like that. You can see how long that one is. And most of the ones they're shipping today come with that. See how short that is? It's always so last year's model, this year's model, same manufacturer, same company. Yeah, so we have a big difference in yeah, size. So depending on what you get, depends on how or where you're going to splice the wiring into it. Most likely you're going to have to splice the wiring into it closer down here, which is good. I mean, you don't have to disturb the glue unless you want to. Now this stuff's yellow and brittle, and I can chip it off. It's not going to fall off naturally. Um, putting this back together, what I would change is I would not re-adhere all this black back plastic. Jeez, my mouth is not staying up with my brain. Um, this back plastic doesn't really need to be glued. Um, you got screws holding it into place. Also in the future if you have to take it back apart you can. Um, the reason you may have to take it back apart is belt, motor, gear. The standard stuff. The more you use it the more you're going to have stuff break. Um, 
I'm not going to glue it back together. What I'm going to do right now is I'm trying to remove the glue residue that's in here because I can't get it to clip back in properly because I have all this dried glue holding me up. So I'm just trying to not cut the pin. I'm just trying to cut the glue. There we go. So I can try and realign everything. So technically reassembly is just the opposite of disassembly. this helped. Um, now I gotta get this thing back together. Uh, you don't technically have to pop out the window like I did. Uh, taking out that screw, all that does again is hold on this. But you will have to take it out eventually to get to those screws for the motor. Um, and by taking it out it does make it a little smaller. As you can see how wide this is trying to pull it off the top of that roof. If you cannot get it out, pop the window out. Um, if yours is all original, this glue is old and brittle and it won't adhere to the porcelain. The glue will usually adhere much better to the plastic pieces than the porcelain. It's just the nature of hot glue and resin glue. Um, it, and, and just clean it up by carefully breaking it off your window. That's most likely where it's going to be stuck. Flex it a little bit, not so much that you crack your window, unless that's the look you want to go for. Maybe when the lightning struck his laboratory, the window broke. You know, uh, I think that li one of the, of the library, I think, has the broken window in it. Um, if you can't get it to break, like this side doesn't want to, if you use some side snips and just carefully put pressure on it and fold it. Right, so... Me trying to flex it, I did chip the window right there in the black frame. So I can fix that when I glue it. I can just hit it with a Sharpie. Or like I said, kind of more looks like a laboratory with cracked glass. You go back to those old horror movies, they weren't perfect buildings. Um, that was the whole point of it being a horror movie. Instill fear and uh, broke down stuff, you know. But anyhow so so what I normally do off camera is I sit here and I remove all the glue that's in my way for reassembly I guess before I forget I should probably find myself a belt I'll link below but I get my belts from Skull Crane um, not endorsed by them it's not an affiliate or anything. Uh, I just found their belts are so much thicker. Look at that. The longevity is great. Um, they seem to work better. They have less slippage. Um, so, again, not an endorsement. I just use their product because I have tried many different belts with many different things. And I found that their belts seem to be the best. Plug it in and turn it on. No speaker again. Just want to make sure this mechanism goes up and down like it's supposed to. Hits the micro switch and stops. Basically, I'm just testing the belt. I want to make sure the belt is good because just because I endorse it doesn't mean they don't come defective every once in a while. Uh, 
I'm going to let it go back to the top before I turn it off, just for assembly to make it easier because I need to get to that screw. Hopefully this helps if you have this piece on how to disassemble it. Um, you don't have to disassemble the back screws unless you need to get to this gearbox. Don't disassemble it before you take it out, I guess is the easiest way to say that. Uh, to make life easier, I would remove the front plate by popping out the window if you do not feel uh, secure in doing that or what have you. Um, just try and wiggle it up. I would recommend keeping Frankie at the top, or excuse me, the monster of Frankie, since the Frankenstein was the doctor, not the monster. And uh, that's where I would put it, just to make it easier to get out. Because if he's at the bottom and you wiggle this out and catch the inside lip of this porcelain, you might break this plastic loop, or possibly break this pin that he slides up and down on. So, just kind of looking for potentials, potential failures. Um, if you have fat fingers, you can't get in there. Thin, long needle nose pliers, or somebody with smaller fingers, or better dexterity. I'm trying to get the screw started in the mount. remember I think it's Dr. Stretch and Pull. There's a couple of them out there that have um, this wooden plank on the back that hold a screw and then usually they hold the circuit board. This one the circuit board's held from the bottom. Ooh, I think I got it. Did I get it? I did. So circuit board's back in. Not tight. And when you do this, don't torque it. Just snug it so that the circuit board doesn't wobble and fall onto the moving mechanism. Now, during reassembly of this, um, I'm not going to use any hard glues such as super glue or uh, a resin glue. I'm going to use Sure Bonder hot glue. Uh, sure Bonder bonds better than, again, not an endorsement, better than um, regular hot glue. And I've tried all of them from Gorilla to Ace to Rigid. Uh, even some of the craft companies out there, and I find that Sure Bonder bonds the best. It also bonds harder, so to me, it's a little bit stronger than a regular hot glue, and but it's still removable with heat. So again, during reassembly or before you reassemble, clean off a lot of the glue. It's going to be in your way it's going to cause problems. And if you try and glue onto the existing glue, it's going to make it thicker, which means it won't be in alignment. Alignment is going to be very important. So he doesn't hit this when he goes up and down because this goes right in here. If I can get it to pop back in. One and pop two. There we go. So it just snaps in. So you want to make sure your alignment, so you can get your roof plate in, and that he doesn't catch anything, because that would defeat the purpose of this whole process. Oh, and if you're curious on what the problem is, is from when the editor called and interrupted my filming, filming. Um, I am in the process of building a prop from the movie Spaceballs, and I needed a couple of parts that were 3D printed, and the 3D printer, the nozzle cracked and screwed up my parts. <laughs> so, so yeah. So instead of uh, getting my parts today, and um, 
maybe maybe doing some prepping on that I have to wait because it's gonna take another umpteen hours to print so don't know I am an avid Spaceballs fan have been since I saw it when I was a kid and I have a lot of the stuff from the movie and I plan to add one more to my edition probably film it problem is a lot of the stuff from Spaceballs that are made that gets made violates the terms of service well, it's like that with anything. I make stuff from video games, and, um, movies, and cartoons. But that's what I used to do when I did stuff for the uh, TV and film industry. Now I just do it for myself. So I can have a piece of the uh, program or show or game I like that's different than everybody else's all right so now that's in I'm gonna plug it in again because I want to make sure that nothing binds before we get to the next step oh I forgot to put Frankie's hands on or yeah the doctor I need to have his um, the handle in a different position Again, there's no sound, no speaker. I just need him to move so I can put the hand, hands on the handle. Should start moving in a second because it just got hit by lightning, hence the flash. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to plug it into the circuit board. <laughs> Ain't gonna move if I ain't got power. Just to be safe, let's unplug that. We are going to film the Spaceballs prop that we're building. Uh, that way, if anybody who's a fan of Spaceballs or Mel Brooks may appreciate it. And if it doesn't violate YouTube's thing, then uh, it'll be up. If it does, it'll, it won't. <laughs> I know that it violates TikTok, because we already used one on TikTok. And TikTok didn't like it. And they removed it. Oh. Gotta go through a whole process again. there. Yes. Got his hands back on. Frankie's all the way to the bottom. I need him to go back up so I can put the, the backer plate on. We're going to flip it back on again. And while we're waiting for that, which was very, very fast, back in <coughs> so I am gonna glue the back of this down don't worry about it I know you're like oh you're gluing it you're not gonna glue it back down I'm gonna glue the around here to keep this from wobbling um, I just don't want to do any of the gluing until I get everything back together 
and I can just have the heat gun on so I can glue or heat gun glue gun on so that way it's all one temperature because I'm not too concerned about the glue here um, I'm just right here where heat cranks is a little way loose and I'll glue the window in at the same time so I'll slide this back up boss that the screw fits into. So I just need to get it to line up. So there we go. And Make sure that all the standoffs are in their respective holding ports. They do. And let's plug this back in so we make sure we still got sounds. And do one more test and then we'll get the glue gun fired up and glue the bottom back on and she'll be all good to go. Again, my fingers are too big. Already risen. I'll probably trim that one that's too tall so this spins better. I'm gonna have it do a full cycle, so I'll down and back up, and then I'm gonna turn it back off. And this is not a resetting one, so I always leave this in the on position with the volume off and plugged in to my power strips that turn on when I turn on each section of the room that is displayed in. So I'm sure you all can figure out the next step of re-adhering the bottom on uh, and then the mat. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous ones, if you get your mat off in one piece, I don't use hot glue to re-adhere it because hot glue makes it lumpy. I use this, if I didn't knock everything down. So when I put mats on, I use the non-stick, um, oh sorry, this isn't it, where'd it go? This is the spray. <clears throat> That's what I use for lubrication. This is what I use for adhesive. I don't like this stuff because it has a longer set time for alignment. And then when it sets, it sets up really good. Uh, the 3M stuff, I, I'm a big 3M fan, um, but their spray adhesive, it does not work as good as the Gorilla. So, and that's just for me trying stuff. You may have different experiences than me. Uh, maybe your climate is more accommodating to different types, but what works best for me is Sure bonder for the hot glue, spray adhesive from Gorilla, Gorilla Super Glue for hard glues, uh, Gorilla uh, really hard glue, this stuff is more of a resin style glue, uh, the dry uh, for your DuPont's non-stick dry lubricant for lubricating sliding plastic parts like the shaft that slides up and down, I would use that on. If you're going to do the gears, you use a PTFE um, lubricant hobby store. Or you can get them online too. But um, that's just what I use for what I found works the best after doing this for the last seven, eight years of fixing these things. Uh, your results may vary, so on and so forth. The standard legal jargon. It's not that I endorse it. It's for uh, monetary or something. It's just I endorse it for it works. <laughs> it's like 
these you know those pliers aren't made for electronics these are made for making beads but see how long and thin they are so whenever somebody asks me where I get these from go to the bead making section at Michael's that's where they get these from and I also like them because they're really fat and padded <laughs> so if you have dexterity issues it helps um, so I just tell you what's best for how I do it not for how you do it um, and it might work better for you uh, I, these are a godsend I love these things um, they they get into the tight places and my fingers don't fit and with dexterity issues um, I have carpal tunnel mild carpal tunnel uh, this helps a lot when I can't use my fingers uh, or my fingers are hurting so um, and this is so much fun to do when you have issues like that but as far as this goes that's how you take it apart this is a moderate to slightly difficult disassembly process you're gonna have to remove the bottom unplug the speaker make it easy get out of the way um, then pry off the faux piece of wood uh, get that screw out you're gonna have to break the glue seam here and here all the way around the bottom of this on the back side you're gonna have to slide him off to the side without breaking the spring that holds him in slide him off the handle my recommendation is pop out the window from the inside and um, take out that screw and remove this backer plate with him in the up position that way you have more room if you can without taking this whole thing out pull this off you saw it's just two little clips to hold it in as long as your clips aren't broken you can pop it back in if they are broken hot glue that way you can remove it in the future if you think you can get it up out of here without smacking these lights and breaking them off go for it um, if you can't uh, try and pop it off inside and have a fallout to bottom lift this whole piece out and then if you need to get to the gearbox meaning all those gears inside you're gonna have to pop this cap off right here to remove that screw and right about there so you can get this back piece off uh, and then the other screws are all accessible and might be covered in glue just pop the glue off then replace the gear as appropriate gear kits have most of all the gears that are well in here they probably have all of them because this is old enough they weren't proprietary yet then uh, if your motor is bad and you get a short pigtail motor just cut the red and black wire close to where this motor is replace the motor um, if you're in here replace the belt you can replace the belt from the bottom you can see it it's right there um, you can get to it so you if your belt broke you probably don't have to do much more than just take the bottom off and get this off to the side and then use tweezers or thin needle nose pliers to pop the belt on and off so you don't have to remove that fascia plate that has the um, stone wall appearance um, beyond that that's about it uh, this I am going to glue back together because now that I popped it open it stays spread so I am going to put some glue in there and clamp this and let it sit for a while so it stays closed so there's no gap uh, hopefully it'll seal um, if not oh well you really can't see it because where it's in my display uh, it's pretty much eye level so you can't see the gap from where the plastic is separated uh, other than that uh, it's pretty well done the rest of it is just heating up my glue gun gluing it all back together putting it back in my display we know it works and uh, it's good <laughs> i'd hate to break it because i do like this piece uh, again because i am an old school horror person i like the original you know frankenstein dracula wolfman uh, creature from the black lagoon um you know bride of frankenstein those kind of movies um, and the new ones are good too but just the old classic characters they just had more personality uh so you're you can do it your your ability should be there to do this it's, it's a moderate take your time uh don't uh, force it if it's binding stop see what's catching uh, biggest thing is don't break the wires uh, these wires are old they're brittle they're going to fall apart you're going to have problems if you break the wires um, that's going to be an issue so try not to break the wires uh, unplug them 
as you saw, the center section completely unplugs, the speaker unplugs, the rest of the wires that are attached are for the lights, which are cast into the ceramic, so you shouldn't have to deal with those whatsoever unless you lose a light bulb. Other than that, we're good to go. Uh, any questions, just put them down below, answer them as best as possible, and we'll go from there. So hopefully this will assist you in the Frankenstein Laboratory from Lee Max on how to uh, open her up, get her out, repair it, and reassemble it. Um, and also if you're thirsty, you like coffee, tea, or cocoa, check out Coffee Brand Coffee, link in the description. Have a good one.